Mm. Okay? Now, today I want to talk about the Austin 7 chassis stiffness. Now, one of the main problems with the Austin 7 chassis is that it tends to twist a lot. But a lot of people make the mistake of boxing the side rails in. And that isn't actually the problem. The problem is, if you take the two side rails, assuming my hands are side rails, then they twist like so, like this and like that. And boxing them in doesn't solve that problem. So what we do is we found that the, on the gooseneck at the front, there's a, a weak section across where it twists. So what I do is I make a plate up that goes inside the, uh, inside the chassis and then I, I weld it into place and that makes a huge difference to the chassis stiffness. Now the other problem with the chassis stiffness is that um, under normal circumstances the engine is bolted directly into the chassis. And when that twists like so, or the rivets become loose, it twists the entire crankcase. And you have serious problems because the back end of the cylinder block doesn't twist, but the aluminium crankcase does twist. And so it break, it's liable to break the back end of the cylinder block off the, off the engine. I had that happen with one of my cars at a 10 stud block, and it broke the whole of the back end of the block off. So that's the first thing. The other thing is that with that arrangement, with that standard chassis and the engine bolted directly in, because the crankcase twists, you can easily get a, uh, an oil leak between the crankcase and the cylinder block. And that's another problem which you can solve by, by strengthening the chassis up. So that's the first thing I wanted to talk about today, about the chassis. So we'll do the, we'll do the rest with it afterwards. Let's just have a now look at the picture of the chassis where I've welded this piece in. Uh, where I've got my finger. You can see that there's this plate that's welded into the chassis here, into the gooseneck, and it goes right up and round and into the, where the spring is bolted to the chassis. So that makes a huge difference to the stiffness of the chassis. And it doesn't really show, so it's quite a good way of doing it without actually making the chassis you know, out of place, and because the big problem with boxing the chassis in is that it only goes as far as the cross members, and then it twists as well when you weld it. It's hopeless, and you can't get the nuts and bolts in anyway, and all that sort of stuff. So it, that's the best way to do it. There is to, to weld a piece in there and solve that particular problem. Okay, that's that's that bit of it, I think. Um, now, now the next thing that's important with the Austin Seven chassis. On this particular car, although it's an Ali 29 car, it's got all the latest modifications because it was a race car. And what they did on these was they originally, the four and a half cross member was simply located at the front here with two rivets at the bottom here and two rivets at the top here on the flange on this uh, cross member. Well, so what I do is I, I take a plate and I weld another plate on there so that it comes inside here and it welds through the front of the cross member there and there and that makes an enormous difference to the stiffness of the chassis and that's another major modification which is well worth doing it doesn't show it doesn't you know it doesn't impinge on the performance of the vehicle it improves it dramatically so that's another thing to do with the, with your Austin 7 chassis if you're building a new one okay thanks very much right this point at which this plate attaches to the chassis are these two rivets here and so whenever the spring is moving it tends to move this cross member rather than the actual attaching it to the chassis so it's very important to modify this so that it works properly this is an oversight on Austin's design so what we do is we take this bottom plate and we weld onto it about an inch of extra metal here at the back. And then we put two rivets through the back of the chassis, or if you can't rivet it, you can put uh, high tensile steel quarter inch bolts. And then the whole thing is completely transformed because that then the whole of the back chassis is located on the spring. And that makes a massive difference to the suspension and also to the shock absorbing.
and it's a major modification. And again, you can make that modification without actually showing very much difference. You wouldn't actually notice it if you didn't weren't told about it. So that's a, another major advantage that you can ad ad adhere to your Austin 7 to make it really handle properly. Uh, thank you very much. Now, I'm going to see this. On these sports engines, they have a, an extended chassis mounting for the ball joint on the chassis here. And it raises the torque tube so the oil doesn't pour out of the front of the torque tube. But the thing is, you've got to remember is that in order for the fabric coupling to line up with this and not get chewed to bits every time you go over a bumper or anything, you have to get this prop shaft lined up with this carden pot at the front, on the front of the torque tube here. And the only way you can do that is by raising the back of the engine. Now, these sports engines are machined specifically with a different angle on the, on the engine mounting, so they raise them up at the back. But you can achieve that same arrangement if you're using a standard crankcase on a sports chassis, and you can achieve the same arrangement by putting uh, spacers under the back end of the um, crankcase mounting brackets on the chassis. But that's very, very important. A lot of people wonder why it is that the, the fabric coupling gets disintegrated very, very quickly. And that's the reason for it, if it's not lined up with this prop shaft, with the, with the uh, carbon pot at the back here. So that's another important point to remember. So, um, now this particular car is 29, so it has a screw in torque tube, which is slightly different for the standard arrangement. But uh, anyway, so that's it. Right, thank you very much.